Good morning, everybody, from the old man hiking. Uh, the club didn't show up this weekend. Uh, this is uh, one man hiking, or the old man hiking. Uh, my name is Al, and I am out here in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in North Carolina. About a three hour drive to get here from home. Uh, long 10 mile gravel road drive, almost an hour drive to get to the trailhead. But we are here hiking the Balsam Mountain Loop. I've got about a half a mile road walk to get down to Palmer Trail. And I'll be heading off north. Uh, this is a 16 mile loop. We're going to do about 12 to 13 miles today and then 3 to 4 to finish tomorrow. So it should be a great hike. Uh, the theme of this hike is embracing the suck. Uh, the weather is not projected to be very cooperative today. They're calling for rain, 90% chance of rain showers, possible thunder showers. But uh, I I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I kind of like hiking in the rain, but uh, I'd like to see, test out my gear, make sure my gear is uh, prepared for the weather, uh, test out my mental toughness to see if I can handle the weather. Uh, in uh, September, Carl and I will be going to Maine to hike the 100 mile wilderness for a 10 to 12 day, 120 mile hike. And if it rains, we're not gonna get to stay home. So need to learn how to handle the weather now before that time comes. So uh, I'm gonna put the pack on. Got about, like I said, about a half mile road walk to get to Palmer Trailhead, and then we'll get hiking. So this is the trail terminus. This is the trail that I will be coming off of. And this is the Balsam Mountain Trailhead parking lot. And I'm parked right over there. Looks like there's a few other people here. We'll be staying in a shelter tonight, or I'm not actually staying in the shelter, but I'm staying at a shelter. We had to make reservations, and uh, right now the weather's looking good, but we'll see. It's subject to change. They're calling for it to change. So we got about a half a mile road walk to get to Palmer Trailhead. Let's get hiking. All right, we have made it to the trailhead of Palmer Creek Trail. Uh, we are gonna be going about three, four miles downhill this trail. And then we're gonna start a 2,500 foot ascent. We hit a low of 2,985 feet and we will be ascending to 5,677 feet. This is a multi-trail loop. We're starting here on Palmer Creek, but we're uh, we're going to intersect pretty hollow balsam or pretty hollow trail, pretty hollow gap trail, and then we're going to intersect balsam mountain loop trail. So uh, got several different trails to connect up with. This should be a really spectacular trip. Looking forward to it. Again, so far so good on the weather. We'll see if it holds, but if it doesn't, it's fine with me. I had a great breakfast on the ride up. Stopped in Maggie Valley. I was really just looking for some fast food, but couldn't find any. So I found this little restaurant called Joey's Pancake House. And it was awesome. Had these two golden pancakes, two eggs, three strips of bacon, and some hash brown casserole. It was outstanding. I'd highly recommend it if you're traveling through Maggie Valley. I hear water down there somewhere can't see it but I can hear it so this is the source of the water noise that I heard earlier on the trail looks like we are descending to the water it's beautiful looking and beautiful sounding oh well, here we go here's all the source of our noise nice little mountain stream
I gotta figure out how to get across. There's no bridge, but looks like I can hop from that rock to that rock over to that rock. This is a horse and hiking trail, so you got to be careful where you step. We have finished the Palmer Creek Trail, and we are now jumping on the Pretty Hollow Gap Trail. We've got four miles to get to the Mount Sterling Ridge Trail, and that will be a 2,500 foot ascent over the four miles. So we're going to make a left-hand turn here and head up this trail. So we've reached a campsite. I believe this is campsite number 37. I'll have to check that to be sure. But here they got some horse tie-offs, and then there was camping in the back there that you can't see. And here, they've got uh, bear bag cables for hanging your bear bags. Uh, it's really important. Uh, Smoky Mountains has some of the highest concentration of black bears in the country. So, you got to be careful. penalty for a descent is there's always an ascent so we got four miles of uphill I don't think it's gonna to be too bad but it's just four miles continuous uphill just kind of wears on you so like I stated earlier, when I started the hike, Carl and I will be going to Maine towards the end of September. We're going to be flying out of Charlotte, flying up to Bangor, Maine. We're going to get picked up by a shuttle driver. Uh, he's going to shuttle us an hour to Monson, Maine. And then he's going to put us up in a cabin. We've got a cabin for two nights. So it gives us some time to tool around in Monson a little bit and see what we can see. It's kind of like the trip before the trip. Then uh, after the second night of the cabin, we're going to wake up and hit the AT. We're going to hike the 100 mile wilderness. We figure it'll take us eight, eight plus, eight to nine days. We have uh, two food drop offs. For resupply so we'll carry three to four days worth of food and then get a resupply on the trail from 100 mile wilderness adventures we'll finish the 100 mile wilderness and then we're going to go into baxter state park and attempt to climb mount katahdin which is the very northern most point very northernmost point of the appalachian trail in total I think we're doing 118 miles. This is one of these bucket list hikes. So I've been training since January, trying to get out as often as possible. Oh, I've got a little uh, scramble here. I'll show you this. I'm gonna have to negotiate this. I'll come back and finish my thought. All right, that wasn't too bad. Uh, so we go up Katahdin, it's a 4,000 foot ascent up Katahdin and back down. They tell you to allow 8 to 10 hours to go up and come back down. 
So we'll get a shuttle driver when we complete that. That'll take us into Millinocket, Maine and put us up in a hostel there for two nights. And we'll horse around Millinocket for a couple days, take a bus back down to Bangor and then fly back home to Charlotte. All of this has to get done within 12 days. It's doable. We just have to stay on track. But part of my reason for coming out solo is number one, keep training. Got to get some miles on the legs and the feet. But number two, if it was going to be bad weather, I wanted to get in it and deal with it. Because when we go to Maine, there's no opportunity in the 100 mile wilderness to come off the trail. We're just gonna have to deal with it. So this is an opportunity to learn how to deal with the weather. I've never hiked a full day in rain before and uh, I've never set up my hammock in the rain. And so it, it's a good training experience. I don't mind coming out alone. Uh, there's a, a peacefulness and a serenity and a freedom to coming out by yourself. Uh, people would and have told me that it's not safe to be out alone, but I've got this right here, my Garmin inReach. It's a satellite communication device. Something goes sideways. I can always hit the SOS button. I've got several people at home that can track my progress on a map. And there's an SOS button. And if something really goes bad, assuming I'm conscious, I can hit the SOS button to emergency services. So that's what you can do to be safe. You're also never really alone. I've already run into three different people on the trail and uh, we're just in passing, but there's people out here. You're not alone. So I got a big climb here. So I'm gonna cut this off. I've been rambling too long, but that's why I'm out. That's what I'm doing and I'm loving it so far. I'll talk to you in a little bit. So we're starting to see some skyline, which is great. It means we're getting close to the summit. Uh, I think I got about a mile left. It's not been super difficult, but it's just continuous. It just the uh, uphill never stops. So it, it just uh, it just kind of wears on you after a while. So maybe another mile I should be at the top and then I can run some ridge for a while. All right, so it's about one o'clock. Uh, a little after one, I think. And we have our first rain of the day. Got the rain jacket on. This is good. Uh, let's deal with it. Let's embrace the suck. I actually like hiking in the rain. I don't know why. But uh, I don't think it's going to be long lasting. I probably could have hiked without the rain jacket. But just in case, I went and put it on. Still got three quarters of a mile to go to hit the top. Let's go. Hike on. So I was trying to get to the top of the ridge before I stopped for lunch and yeah, I'm running out of energy. So I'm gonna refuel, get some lunch and finish the last half mile, hopefully a little stronger than what I've been doing. 
I'm, I'm almost crawling. It's grueling. It ain't brutal, but it's grueling. So let's get a little lunch and then we'll continue on. So for lunch today, we have Nutella and pretzels. This will be a good little energy boost to finish this climb. You got a few other snacks in there too, but this is my main lunch. It's pretty good. Lunch is over. Probably should have stopped about an hour earlier. I needed some uh, hydration. I need some fuel. So got that in. Took about a 30 minute break. And uh, we're gonna finish this uphill. We're gonna get to the top of this ridge and then we're gonna run a ridge for about four more miles. Camp is around mile 13. We've got uh, almost eight miles done. So we got maybe four to five miles left to go. So I figure we should be there by five o'clock at the latest. Let's hike on. Oh, it stopped raining. Rain jacket's off. Sun's come out. It only rained about 15 minutes. Not too bad. All right. We have made it to the summit. Man, that was rough. So we are now going to take the Balsam Mountain Trail, 3.9 miles. And then it intersects with the Benton Mackay Trail, which is a pretty famous long distance trail. I have been here before. Several years ago, we hiked to Sterling Mountain and we came up from down there and we hiked up this way and stayed at a campsite near a fire tower. And that was probably three years ago. And so good to be back. It's beautiful here. Weather's nice, it's cool. A little bit of showers, no big deal. All right, let's run this ridge. I think we got, uh, like I said, about four miles, 3.9 miles to get to camp. So we should get there rather quickly. I think we have a little bit more of an ascent and then we just run the ridge the whole way. I think that was the last ascent of the hike. So in total, it was five miles of continuous uphill once I made the turn on this, what I, I thought this was the Balsam Mountain Trail, but I think I'm wrong. Some people told me that this is the Benton Mackay Trail and I'm hiking to the Balsam Mountain Trail, which from that sign back there was 3.9 miles. So there was one little ascent that about kicked my butt. And I think the rest of this is pretty cruisy. So I still say we got about four miles or so to get to camp. It's uh, I don't know, about three o'clock. So I think we'll get there by five, I think. Five or six o'clock, somewhere on there. I don't know, it can't be seen from this shot, but that is a serious drop off straight downhill right there. And here's our trail. And that is straight up hill. We are going to stop here and get water. I'm gonna get it right there. And I'm gonna camel up and take probably three liters of water into camp. Um, it's unknown as to whether or not there's water in camp, so I'm about a mile and a half short of camp and I just can't risk Not having water, so I'm gonna get some water here and carry it in. It's gonna be really heavy But you do what you got to do We got water. I have a very heavy pack. I'm carrying two, three, four liters of water in the camp. That's about eight pounds just by itself. So fortunately we don't have a 
super long walk to get there. That was a very long four miles, but this was the Benton Mackay Trail here. Uh, if we stay on Benton Mackay, we can hit the Appalachian Trail in 5.8 miles, but we are making a left. We're going to get on Balsam Mountain Trail, and we are staying at Laurel Gap Shelter. Point three, so we're almost there. Well, we have made it to Laurel Gap Shelter. It is 5.10 now, and we got here probably about 4.30. I'm mean, getting everything set up. Got uh, several people staying here. We got Tom, we got Mike, and then Mike's wife. I cannot remember her name. But uh, we'll hang out tonight, eat some dinner together. So dinner, dinner tonight is Mountain House Beef Stew. <laughs> Two thirds cup of water, bring it to a boil, rehydrate for 10 minutes. The bear bags are hung by the cables with care in hopes that we don't get eaten by a big black bear. Good morning. This is Sunday, May 15th. Yesterday, I forgot to mention, was Saturday, May 14th. Uh, we're all packed up, going to get some breakfast, um, and then hit the trail. Easy four-mile hike downhill. It's all downhill to get to the uh, terminus of the trail. Uh, it was a great hike yesterday. Um, I had about 15 minutes of rain. That was it. Sun, a lot, cloudy, some. And uh, got to camp last night about 4.30, set up, and then uh, there was uh, three other guys here and then a husband and his wife. And so we all got along great, hung out together, ate dinner together, had a little fire together. So it was a lot of fun meeting some new people and. Uh, hanging out for a little while. I actually got pretty darn good sleep last night. Uh, even though my hammock was all jacked up, I, something, I didn't set something up right. Uh, but I still got pretty decent sleep, so I'm not complaining. So eat a little breakfast, or we hit the trail. Sun's coming up. Beautiful blue skies. Looks like it's gonna be a beautiful hike out. Nice and lush and green this morning. Very damp. I'm going back with an extra pound of moisture in all my gear. No views on this hike. All green tunnel. Beautiful green tunnel but just green tunnel. Right, we have made it to the sign, wherever this place is at. And the second line, third line down is Balsam Mountain Road, 2.3 miles. So that's what I got left in the hike. And here we are, the end of the trail. Now we got a 20 mile drive out on a gravel road, doing 10 mile an hour. It'll take me an hour just to get off the road. There's the car. And here's the sign. And here comes Bo, Tom, and Mike. Stayed with them at the shelter last night. I had a great time. Good job, fellas. Top 10. There you go. How's the knee doing, Tom? Uh, I'm gonna make it. All right, excellent, <laughs> Mike. Great hiking with you guys. All right, and that concludes the Balsam Mountain Loop hike. It was, it was a great hike. Uh, not a lot of views. That was a little disappointing. We're in the green tunnel most of the time. Uh, 
I think the best part of the hike was the water features in the first five or six miles there was a lot of water and that was a lot of fun to to video and, and hike beside uh, and then then it got there was a little boring part in there and then when it got to camp and got to hang out with the rest of the people at the, the shelter that was a lot of fun and then I hiked out with uh, the three guys Mike and Bo and Tom uh, and so it was, it was great great experience a little confidence builder I don't go out hiking by myself very often so uh, Every time you do it, you just gain a little more confidence. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So it is good, great weekend. Weather turned out great. Glad I came. Great Smoky Mountains, Balsam Mountain Loop Hike.